All right, Dante's Boxing Nation over here with the man, the miracle man, I'm Danny Jacobs. I'm feeling happy, Dante. Oh, man. I got a chance to meet you, brother. Oh, it's man. It's been an honor, man. I've always appreciate... followed your work. I appreciate I want to say I appreciate you for supporting the sport of boxing, doing such a positive job supporting us fighters. You put our lives on the line, and you do such a tremendous, respectful job of doing what you do for us, and I want to commend you, brother. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So, Ed Islani Lara, who's fighting today, he actually gave his take on the Canelo versus Danny Jacobs fight. For those of you guys, you know that he actually faced Canelo Alvarez about five years ago. He actually gave Danny Jacobs some advice, but at the same time, he showed a lot of respect for Canelo Alvarez as well. Here's what he had to say. Danny Jacobs is a great fighter. I think he has a hell of a shot to win the fight. Obviously, Canelo is a great fighter himself. I don't think anyone stands a chance to win a decision in Las Vegas against Canelo Alvarez. It's almost impossible sometimes to get a fair decision in Las Vegas, period, for any fighter. Any fighter can be knocked out. My advice to Jacobs is to go after Canelo early and try to hurt him. Let Canelo know that he's the boss. Any fighter can get hurt, but obviously Canelo has shown to have a great chin too. That's why they fight the fights, end quote. Okay, so when Laura fought against Canelo Alvarez, one of the judges, he had Canelo Alvarez winning almost every single round in a fight once again that a lot of people believe Laura won. And we all know when a fight ends in controversy, you're supposed to give the fighter a rematch. But Canelo Alvarez wanted no parts of a rematch with Laura. And at the time that Canelo fought against Laura, the pay-per-view that they put on was very successful, so there was really no reason for Canelo not to take the rematch unless he thought it would be too difficult to win a rematch. But yet Canelo, he had no problem giving Golovkin a rematch, and he's already talking about a possible third fight. So this clearly suggests that he thought going into a rematch with Golovkin, it would be an easier fight than going into a rematch with Adeslani Lara. Now, everything that Laura just said right there, coincidentally, is almost the same thing that B.J. Saunders just recently said. I did a video about what B.J. Saunders had to say. If you guys missed that video, go ahead and check it out. It's a really good video. But once again, Edislani Laura, he said the same thing. He believes Danny Jacobs can win the fight, but he doesn't believe Danny will get a fair shake by the judges once again if this fight is competitive. In other words... If Danny Jacobs were to win nine rounds to three, if he were to win seven rounds to five, he's most likely going to get robbed. Danny Jacobs would most likely have to knock down Canelo a couple of times, if not knock him out. He would have to win this fight so decisively that the judges would be forced to give him the decision. Now, like I told you guys on previous videos, this is not to suggest that Canelo doesn't have the skills to beat Danny Jacobs because he definitely does. It just implies Canelo has more ways to beat Danny Jacobs. While Danny Jacobs may have plan A and B, you have Canelo Alvarez who has plans A, B, and C. And plan C would be the judges. You know, it's pretty ironic and it's a hell of a coincidence when you think about the fact Canelo is obviously promoted by Oscar De La Hoya. And the whole situation reminds me of a lot of close decision wins that Oscar De La Hoya got. I mean, when Oscar De La Hoya fought against fighters like Pernell Whitaker and Ike Corte, the situations were very analogous to the Canelo versus Laura situation. When Oscar De La Hoya fought a much older Pernell Whitaker, even Larry Merchant said that he thought Pernell Whitaker won the fight. When Oscar fought against Ike Corte, a lot of people thought Ike Corte won that fight. And just like Canelo Alvarez did not give Laura a rematch, Oscar De La Hoya did not give Pernell Whitaker or Ike Corte a rematch. But he did manage to give a badly faded Julio Cesar Chavez a rematch, who he completely dominated in the first fight. 
So with that all being said, Danny Jacobs definitely has his work cut out for him. He's been talking about knocking out Canelo Alvarez. He's been talking about knocking out Canelo a lot more than he talked about knocking out Golovkin when he fought against Golovkin. I wonder if he feels Canelo is smaller than Gennady Golovkin. In fact, he actually said something that suggested that. He said that while Golovkin was bigger than Canelo Alvarez, he's bigger than Golovkin. So he does feel that he's much bigger than Canelo. We'll see if he can impose his size. At least, will his size be effective? Will his power be effective against Canelo Alvarez? Canelo has a lot of power as well. We'll see how it works. I mean, Canelo, even though he was smaller than Golovkin in the rematch, Canelo was able to back up the bigger Golovkin. So we'll see how this fight plays out. We'll also see how Danny Jacobs fights Canelo Alvarez. Will he fight Canelo Alvarez the way he fought Sergio Mora, where he just comes forward really aggressive but intelligent? Or will he fight Canelo the way he fought against Gennady Golovkin in somewhat of a chess match? If he fights that way, he definitely loses the fight because he would make the fight way too close. But I don't believe Danny Jacobs is going to fight that way. I believe Danny Jacobs, he understands that he allowed the Golovkin fight to be too close. And just like Danny Jacobs said at the press conference, styles make fights. We'll see how Canelo Alvarez deals with a naturally bigger, very athletic fighter with the height advantage, reach, and a lot of momentum going into this fight. Danny Jacobs has fought four undefeated fighters in a row. And it could be argued that he actually won all four when you include the Gennady Golovkin fight. I wonder if Danny Jacobs has been studying the Canelo versus Mayweather fight. Because Danny Jacobs, he knows how to fight out of the shoulder roll. He knows how to counter just like Floyd Mayweather does. And if he implements that against Canelo Alvarez, it could possibly be effective in this fight. Now, I know some Canelo Alvarez fans, they're going to say, well, hey, Canelo Alvarez is not the same fighter since he lost to Floyd Mayweather. Yes, he is. He's the exact same fighter. Canelo Alvarez was a good fighter before he lost to Mayweather, and he's a good fighter today. I mean, the only way you could really say that Canelo Alvarez is not the same fighter is if he would have had a rematch around that same time with Mayweather and end up dominating him. Just like he had a rematch with Gennady Golovkin, and he actually did better in the rematch. But we know styles make fights. And Golovkin is far more predictable than a Floyd Mayweather, obviously, right? I mean, let's not forget, Canelo Alvarez, he had problems with boxers before the Mayweather fight. He had problems with boxers after the Mayweather fight. Let's not forget, he was getting completely outboxed by Amir Khan before he knocked out Amir Khan. And he was getting outboxed, he had problems with Edislani Lara. And neither one of those fighters are on the level of a 37-year-old Floyd Mayweather. I mean, let's not even talk about a 27-year-old Floyd Mayweather because remember, it was a 37-year-old Floyd Mayweather that Canelo lost to. I mean, how many of you guys think Canelo Alvarez or the majority of these fighters today at age 37 or 38 are going to be dominating young, undefeated champions bigger than them at higher weight classes in their early 20s. Not too many, right? With all of that being said, this is truly a 50-50 fight. And you would definitely have to give the edge to Canelo Alvarez because he does have the little help that he would need if this fight were close. Which is once again plan C. Canelo, he got a hell of a plan C, I tell you. But once again, guys, I believe that this is the most anticipated fight so far of 2019. It's the biggest fight and the most significant. But let's just hope this event doesn't get ruined with controversy. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.